There we go. Okay, so now we're we're good. All right. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody say good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. There we morning. go. All right. So we have uh, we have people calling in from uh, a whole bunch of different places. So first of all, I want to thank everybody that's called in today. Um, you know, we've got some new power agents on the call. This is their first time on the on the call. And um, just to give you, let, remind everybody, there's a lot of different places to to participate in this call. There's there's Facebook um, Live, which is just in our power group. We also, if you're in front of a computer, you can actually see my screen. I'll be sharing my screen. Some of you have me on your video, and I see some of the pretty faces there on the video. They're using their their cameras, and um, plus, of course, the telephone. So there's a lot of different ways. Uh, now, what I'm going to suggest you do, everybody right now, just so we get a really good recording and there's no noise, even though we just said hello to everybody, if you hit star six on your keypad one time, that will mute you, and um, that everybody just do that now. Now, you'll still be able to hear me, but it'll help the recording. After you've done that, listen, when you want to unmute yourself, you just hit star six, and for those of you that are in front of your computer, there's a way to do private chatting to send us a message. You'll see that on the screen, too. So you'll just get used to this for those of you this is your first time. But the best thing right now is just don't worry about technical stuff like I just have to deal with. Just listen and participate. Um, there's a couple of things we're going to do. There's three things we do on these calls. Number one is to go through the magazine on the Power Program website. And for those of you um, that are in front of your computer, and maybe you'll do this now or do it later, but if you go to thepowerprogram.com and then you click on Classroom, you'll see the magazine for this month, for August. And um, I, we got kind of crazy this month with this magazine. We did, this so magazine turned out to be, hang on one second, gang. I just muted everybody so that way. Anybody coming to the call, it won't be noisy. Uh, if you want to ask me a question any time during this call, I want you to hit star six. That will take you off mute, and then I'll be able to hear you, which I'm going to ask you to do shortly. But going back to what I was saying, this month's magazine that we gave you on the Power Program website, I don't know what happened, but we got crazy. Because usually a magazine is like 40 or 50 pages long. This month's magazine is 80 pages. <laughs> Now, I just want to say something about the magazines that we give you every month. Uh, there is way more in the magazines that you'll ever be able to use. And the reason why I do that is because I just I don't want to hold back in sharing anything with you that I think might help you. Everybody on these calls, everybody in our, uh, that's a power agent has different needs, challenges. So I'm trying to give to everybody. So, you know, I just give you everything that I have that I think is important for this time of year and you know you pick and choose I want to take the time so first of all what we're going to do is go through the magazine that's number one number two is um, to give you some tips to help you in your business the next 30 days and the last thing is more importantly is to answer any questions that you have this is your opportunity in a group setting to get one-on-one -on -one coaching through me now whenever you ask a question I'm going to uh, tweak the question to make sure that my answer will be valuable to everybody. So I don't want anybody to listen passively and think, oh, this doesn't apply to me. I will make it apply to you. All right. So for those of you that have the magazine in front of you, I want to go through that first because there's so much in there. And uh, we're going to take about 20 minutes. Those of you listening, uh, and if you don't have the magazine in front of you, just make notes. I'm going to make uh, comments about the page number so if you write down the page number and then my thoughts about it you can when you get a chance you'll go to the magazine and open it up first of all this month we have we interviewed uh, Sherry Gottschall from uh, Remax a great agent we transcribed it for you the recording is on there you can download it to your computer really awesome content in there but let me jump to the pages starting with page number 25 so every month recently, I've been up, uh, having my office upload these flyers that you can use in mailing pieces, you know, to, uh, to promote yourself or to get other listing leads. On page 25, there's one that you can send out to vacant homeowners. So if you find 
I'm um, vacant land. Sorry. So if you find some vacant land in your marketplace and you go to reverse it and you find who the homeowner is and what the mailing address is through the town records, we created this flyer to send out to them to maybe turn a vacant land into a listing. On page 26, there's a flyer that talks about doing an open house during the winter. Now, obviously, we're in August, although with, although with this global warming somewhere, it's, it's winter in the world. But anyway, um, the, I gave you this flyer in August because I didn't want to give it to you uh, just when the winter hits. I'll give you, for instance, uh, there's also a Halloween flyer I gave you. So on page 27, because I want you to be able to take this flyer, take this idea, and start laying the groundwork to get ready. You know, cr cr uh, drop in your contact information in the flyer, get it printed. This is safety tips for Halloween. And there's just some really great tips there to give to parents. And uh, one of the things you can do is do this as a mailing to your farm area. Uh, and, and just let the homeowners know that, hey, listen, and, and again, what I would do is, is send this bef the month before Halloween and tell them, here's some, here's some suggestions to keep your, our kids safe during uh, this Halloween season. You know, what, what do they say, the ladies, the best way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Well, the best way to a parent's heart is through their children. Um, so there's that. I'll tell you one other thing. One of our one of our clients, what they did during Halloween too, is they create these um, little goodie bags that when 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 the kids would come to the house and but the goodie bags actually had the agent's business card attached to the goodie bag. Now some people may say it's a little cheesy, it's a little salesy, it's a little over the top. Um, but this client of mine. What she used to say is, you know what, this is the one time a year where your farm area comes knocking on your door. And I really love that concept about Halloween. Now, I will tell you one other thing, which I think is better. Instead of putting your business card on a tr trick-or-treat bag of goodies, because um, I do think that's a little, I, I wouldn't do it, to be honest with you. I like the concept of people coming, the, your farm area is coming to your house, knocking on your door. If you were to Google customized Halloween uh, goodie bag, something like that, if you Google that term, you're going to find that there's companies out there that actually will print out these little goodie bags with your contact information. And I think that's a, a, less, uh, a less, what's the word I'm looking for, less gaudy, if you will, by attaching your business card to a kid's bag. Actually having these bags pre-printed, I think I like a lot better. And I, that, I, that I would do personally. All right, now, going on to this magazine, because I'm only on page 28 and we have like 80. Um, on page 28, there's eight reasons to hire an agent to sell your home. Great flyer that we created for you, dropping your information to the bottom. Uh, at this one here, page, I love this one, page 29, your new homeowner to-do list. This is a checklist that you can give to anybody that's just moving into a new home uh, that gives them tips about, you know, change address cards, moving supplies, utilities, but it's also good for your sellers who are moving out of town, right, that you can actually give this to them. Um, then on page Let's see, next one. And by the way, gang, if you have any questions while I'm going through this, I'm going to open up part of this conference call because I just looked at how many people are on the call. We have a ton of pe people. I think we just broke a record. as the number of people we have on the call today. Um, if you have any questions, just write it down for me. I'm going to open up the conference call to give you coaching. So just hang in there. I want to get through this magazine with you. Um, uh, let's see, page 20. So that was 29. Page 30. 30, we have uh, repairs to consider before selling your home. You see, now I love that. Repairs to consider before selling your home. This is a, a great little, if you read through, let me see if I read through these. Yes, I, I want to share these. Uh, fog windows. Fog windows are a result of moisture buildup in between the panes. Uh, when they fail, uh, consider repairing or replacing these fog windows. You, we all know as agents when a window gets when a buyer sees that, it's like it's such a, a negative thing to a buyer. Uh, here's where's another one that I saw that I really love. Light bulbs. This is a silly one on this flyer. Light bulbs. Home inspectors 
have written, uh, uh, forget that, hang on, hang on, to avoid the impression that there may be a major electrical issue with your home, simply change your burned out light bulbs. Also, be sure to use bulbs with the correct wattage. Okay. Um, anyway, this is there's some really great tips. I don't want to read them all, but that is page 30. I really love this flyer. This is something that you can give, again, as a mailing piece. You can bring it on a listing appointment to help break the ice. Any of these little gifts that I'm giving you, you can use as icebreakers on a listing appointment. On page 31, there is, it starts this article that we found on 50 ways for home builders to waste money. These are 50 things that builders do sometimes, mistakes that they make, and they lose money on it. Now, what you can use with this, this is page 31, 32, 33, 34, I think it goes to page 39 or page 40. Anyway, you can actually print out this article, use it as a mailing, use it as uh, something to drop off to a builder. But also, it, any of you that are looking to break into the builder, uh, to get some builder listings, this might be really helpful and educational uh, on, on speaking their language and understanding some of the challenges that builders go through. All right, let's go to, now on page 42, wow, um, we're halfway through the magazine. Page 42 is an example of a listing presentation book, and you all know I like to call it listing conversation. And I'm just going to point out a couple of things that were good uh, about this. On page 43, there's, he customized it for the homeowner. And on page 44, Tom, this is one of our power agents, he um, shows his education experience, almost like a resume, and a little bit about the company on page 45. Then um, he's got a QR code, which I think is old technology, though. Um, all right, page 47. By the way, I'm going to point out some uh, not-so-great things about his listing book. But page 47 starts his credentials, and what he has is, copies of a certificates, his license, his code of ethics, um, some of the other certificates on appraisal, which is powerful, right? So the fact that he's taking these classes on appraisal, I think that's powerful that he would show that on a listing appointment be, at the very beginning of the conversation because it gives him credibility that when he speaks to the homeowner about pricing, he's got these credentials behind him. So I really think that that's awesome that he has that. Um, his college education, one of our courses that he took, uh, the sure results he's got there, and some client testimonials. So Tom did a really good job in promoting himself and showing that up front to the homeowner. So I like that. Now he has the marketing piece. And then he's going to go into how he markets property. This is where I'm not too crazy about what he did, me personally. Now he's got a flaw, he's got a page there uh, it's our page 55, and it shows here's what I'm going to do for you in the first week, the second week, the third week, and ongoing activities. So I really, I do like this that he has, all right, here's what I'm going to do for you as your listing agent. Here's all of our marketing. But in explaining to a homeowner, here's why, you know, when you think about it, when you're going on a listing appointment, there's two, and you may want to make a note of this, gang, there's two things you um need to uh, validate or to get the homeowner to understand. And, it, and it, if it's a FISBO, the ho that homeowner has to understand the value of realtor. Now, if it's not a FISBO, here's the second thing. If it's somebody that is going to work with an agent, like they are interviewing, you know, we're doing some work in my house, and I'm interviewing different contractors to come over and give us pricing on things. So you might have a homeowner who's looking to sell their house. They're not interested in doing it as a FISBO, so they're calling you in. In that scenario, there's more of a focus on communicating how you take the marketing tools that almost all realtors have. We all do brokers, open house, public open house, your yard sign, lockbox. So we all pretty much do the same thing. But presenting how is it, how do you use those tools that are different than perhaps how another agent may use it? You know, one of the things I used to like to do on a listing appointment, and I can't, oh, I just, uh, hang on one second, gang, I just lost my spot. One of the things that I, I like to, that I used to do on a listing appointment is I would give a homeowner a pen, and I would tell the homeowner, um, 
to take this pen and write the word sold. By the way, this is the pen I was actually going to have them sign the listing agreement to. So I'd give them the pen and I'd say, uh, take this and please write the word sold on this piece of paper. So they would do that. And then I'd take the pen back from them and say, all right, let me do it. Now, if the homeowner did it in script, I would do it in print or vice versa. And so I would show the homeowner, look, we have two words, uh, both different results. You know, you use script, I use print, but we use the same tool. And uh, the same tool got two different results. And in real estate, it's the same way. See, when it comes to brokers open houses, you know, a lot of brokers will do that. It's a tool to get your house sold. But here's how I use the tool that's different and I think even more effective than any other agent, how they use it. And then I would show how I do the open house, a lo brokers open house, along with using the metaphors. Any of you that have been with me before, you know how I push using metaphors and analogies. So in this case, I would say, you know, to me, the broker's open house is similar to when a clothes designer is going to have a fashion show. You know, when a clothes designer is going to launch his new line of clothes, he has a fashion show, he has food, he has press, he makes it a big event. He has it almost like this media frenzy party. And, and, and he wants this or she wants as many buyers from other stores to come to this show because when they look at the clothes, those buyers of, let's say, Macy's or Nordstrom's, whatever, they'll bring that, my, that close to their store to sell it to their buyers. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, that's how I look at the broker's open house. It's like a fashion show where I want to get as many of the other brokers, the other agents to our house, so that way they can bring it back to their store and sell it to their buyers. The only difference here is you're the featured you know, the line of clothes. I don't have a whole bunch of others. It's just yours. And that's how I look at the Burgers Open House. That's how important it is to me. We're launching this new product, this new, this new store. So anyway, that's how I used to do it. Uh, all right, let me go back to, I'm going off. Sorry, I hope that helped you. All right, let me go back to where I was. So he has his marketing plan. Let me see, what page was that? Okay, page 54. 55 he has the summary here's what I'm going to do so again what I would suggest when you're presenting going back to what I was saying when you're talking to her for sale by owner the focus needs to be on validating the power of working with a real estate agent and if you they get into buy into realtor and you're the one talking to them they're naturally going to hire you but if you're going into that free CMA or that person who's considering other agents then you want to focus on how you're different so there's the distinction between the two conversations. But in any event, I would always like that every page of my book represented one of the marketing tools, which um, Tom Price in this, and what I'm showing you, doesn't have that. So for example, I would have a page that just showed Brokers Open House. I'd have another page that would show Public Open House, then another one that would show Lockbox and the Power. So each page would show one of the marketing tools that I use to get the property sold. He has just a summary on page 55. He has websites on page 56. I like that. Then he's showing on page 57 what an MLS looks like. I think that's good to educate a homeowner because I don't have to tell you, gang, when we, some of us have agents in our marketplace, when they fill out an MLS, and this really is a pet peeve of mine, they fill it out and they leave a lot of blanks so they don't validate information. You know, here's what I think about MLS. To me, MLS is like the billboard promoting your listing to your fellow realtor. And, you know, it doesn't make sense to me. When I see MLSs not filled out correctly, I see the remarks section where you can write five sentences, there's only one. Um, you know, I saw something today that was bothered me. Um, I'll give you a for instance. And it's actually um, an agent that I know. Uh, I saw on Facebook they advertised this property uh, as in including uh, uh, some acreage with the property. Well, when I clicked on it, I went to the property description. No, the acreage is an additional purchase. It's not part of it. So, you know, little things like that are really not cool to do, and I think it gives our industry a black eye. So anyway, make sure you fill out your listing agreements completely, but not just completely. You, I want you to consider what you're filling out is really to promote to other agents to get excited about your listing. 
You know, I'll be honest with you, gang. When I when I used to get a listing, I would have the homeowner in my day, and I'm going to sound like an old fart, but in my day, our listing forms uh, were one sheet. We didn't have lead paint disclosure, sellers disclosure. We didn't have all the stuff that we got to have now. But uh, this one form at the top part of it was the MLS form. So those were the the data the data sheet. The bottom half was the actual listing agreement as far as expiration date commission all that stuff I used to leave the top portion blank of course I put the address in the style and the rest of it but the, but any of the data stuff that went out to the realtors I left it blank here's why I, I said to the homeowner mr. miss Hanna because this is going to go into MLS and it's going to be what we're promoting to other agents I want to go back to the I don't want to rush this I want to really think about the best way to present your house to my fellow realtors so I don't want to rush this so I'm going to leave this this information blank as far as bedrooms and the square footage and all that stuff because I want to validate it anyway and that was a never an issue with the homeowner actually I think they appreciated it so um all right I'm going to finish up this magazine so he's got some, I just want to jump to some other stuff real quick I, I'll show you one thing he has that I really really like and that's page 67 what he did Tom is he has the um the address of this property is Holiday Drive, okay? And then he has a he has a list of all the current houses for sale on Holiday Drive. Now a lot of us will use um, will use uh, comps things that have sold to do a CMA, which is fine. But to me, the best thing is explaining to a homeowner, listen, what is already sold is in the past. You know, when a buyer is looking to buy a house, when they look at to buy a car, they don't look at the cars that are not available. They look at the cars that are available or the dresses that are available or the furniture that is available. When people are looking to buy a house, they're looking at other houses that they can buy. So although what has sold is useful information, it's something for us to give us a baseline and to give us really what we need to look at is what's your competition. Because any buyer that comes into your house they're not just coming to your house. Any agent that's coming to show your property, it's going to compare your house to the other houses that they can show to their buyers. So your competition is what we really need to pay attention to see where we're going to fall in in this list of the competition. And if you look on page 67, you've got, if you were a, a homeowner looking at this, it, it's kind of obvious that if you're in the low threes, you know, you're kind of on the high end. And you want to go in the low 290s if you want to compete against the other. So I love page 67 as part of remind you how to present price to show active listings. This is a great flyer about a home buyer workshop. And let's see, what else do we want to do? Let me just minimize this and go through. Uh, there's a great ad on page 70 for you. Hey, for sale by owner, what are you looking here? This is where <coughs> you would place an ad. Uh, to attract um, where you would where homeowners would place their ads for sale uh, and to have them call you to do a free CMA all right I think that's it there's just way too much I'm going to jump off this I've come pretty much to the end of the magazine or coming to it I want to open up the call to do some coaching oh Debbie White now Debbie White asks where is the magazine um, you know Debbie here's I can't share I don't have my uh, uh, Windows Explorer to share with you but everybody the magazine is on the powerprogram.com website the powerprogram.com you have to log in to the website as a power agent after you log in um, you'll go to the word classroom and then you'll see the magazine now the magazine is a PDF you can download it and um, and then you can start to edit it and play with things and for those of you who don't know, I'm just going to, you know, when you have a PDF, sometimes what you can do is highlight. Let's see if I can do it here. You highlight it just by holding down your mouse, and then if you copy it, you can then paste it into a Word document. So if you wanted to recreate any of these things, uh, that's one of the ways that you can do that. So I hope that helped you, Deb. Now, um, this is where it is. Thank you, Sarah, for answering that question. All right. Uh, Sarah just posted it in the chat for them. All right, so gang, here's what we're going to do. We're going to open up the call. Anybody has a question um, that you need some help with, some coaching, some one-on-one, -on -one, you're going to hit star six on the call. That'll take you off mute. 
And uh, Mary Margaret Brown, if you're on the call, hit star six one time on your keypad. That'll take you off, and then I'll be able to hear you because um, you had a question that I want to talk about. If not, I will go to the next person. Hey, Sarah. Are you there, Mary Margaret? I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you. How okay. you doing? Fine. How are you? Good. I'm doing great. So, um, you're at Keller Williams. And you're in Virginia, yes? Right. Well, th and this is, is this your first call on the conference call? Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> well, welcome. All right. So you had a great question. So I, I pulled. I wrote some notes for you. You know, it's really great that you email me. That's the best way to do it. If you, um, oh, you know what? I should have. I should have shared. Hang on one second. Um, yeah. If you want to take some notes, everybody take some notes. Here is. Ask me your question, Mary. Ask me your question. Okay. I was just asking you what you think is the best way to lead generate. There's yeah. so many options. And, and I know your conference is actually about that, but it's just there's so many choices out there, and I want to make the best choice and the most efficient choice. Yeah, that's great. So let me um, tell you, here is perhaps the the best. The be let me um, go to my file. So I created a Word document for, for you based on your question. So first of all, there's obviously for sale by owners and expireds, and um, you know the one the company that I recommend the bet the most on this Mary Margaret is the Red X to help you with those two. Do you remember me talking about that in the seminar? Yes, I do. Have you started doing that yet or no? Not yet. I haven't. Okay. All right. So Mary, um, I'm going to say something for you and everybody else. So I'm going to finish answering your question um, about other ways to generate listing leads. But I'm always apprehensive to share the other ways to do it because um, sometimes what we will do as agents is we'll do the things that are easiest to do, um, like some of these other things that I'm going to share, but they're not the, the best source of leads. They're, you know, FISBOS and expireds are the best because we know these people want to sell now, but a lot of us are afraid to make those calls. We're uncomfortable. So then we start doing the other things like mailings. And um, I just don't want you to do mailings to avoid calling FISBOS and expireds. Does that make sense? Okay. So you must know me well. <laughs> Mary, you're not the only person, okay? So, listen, it is uh, – how do I say this? Um, um, okay, so uh, I'm going to share something that I'm just sharing with the power agents, and, and uh, you know, this, this may be – this is a little embarrassing what I'm going to share, okay? Um, but I don't know if it's embarrassing is the word. It's just personal. So I've gotten to this point, Mary, where I've maxed out on my – my weight. You know, I've gotten to a point because of all the traveling I've been doing, I've not been taking care of myself. And it's gotten to a point, it's just not healthy, you know. And um, so I've made a commitment to a plan to do something about it. Are you with me so far, Mary? Mm -hmm. Now, for me, doing this plan to uh, get healthy is one of the hardest things I have to do in my life. I, I would rather call a FISBO then then do what I'm doing. Are you with me so far? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So, so my point here in sharing this with you is that how much you wouldn't want to call it for a sale by owner is how much I don't want to do the plan that I'm doing. And here's what's helping me do the plan. Now, which, by the way, I've, I'm, I'm doing better. It's, it's already just been a week, and I've lost eight pounds, and so, I'm you know, things are going well. Um but here's the biggest thing that's helping me. I have to embrace and accept that I'm going to be uncomfortable. You know, it's, it's when, I'm, when we're uncomfortable, we almost don't like being uncomfortable and we think we shouldn't be uncomfortable and so then we'll stop doing the thing that's making us uncomfortable. But the truth is, when we do the thing that's uncomfortable, we know we're doing the right thing because it's that uncomfortableness is the thing that's different and new. And if we want different or new results, we have to take new and different action. Is that making sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you call, so when you go to call a first sale by owner and expired, 
It's the same thing like a diet. It's going to be uncomfortable. You're not going to want to. You're going to screw up. But it's important that you still embrace the uncomfortableness. You make the call and screw up. Like, in other words, it's okay if you screw up. It's okay if you don't get the appointment because you're taking the action that's necessary to have an impact in your life, in your business, and it's new and it's different. Now, what will start to happen is the uncomfortableness will become less uncomfortable because now you'll start to get used to it. You know, you'll realize that the homeowners are not going to bite your head off and it's okay if they hang up on you and it's okay if you get the appointment or not get the appointment. So there'll be a growing process, but it's that initial first few weeks that it's difficult. Same thing like people who quit smoking. People would say, you know, quitting smoking the hardest is that first 30 days. After that 30 days, it's a little bit easier. And then the next 30, it's a little bit, it keeps getting easier every month. Same thing with physicals and expired. So I'm going to give you some additional things to do. But I'm telling you, Mary, there's nothing better than calling, than calling physicals and expired. That is absolutely the best. And the only time that's not the best choice is when you, we've got some people on or who are power agents who are maybe in a rural part of the U.S., where there just isn't a lot of first sale by owners. It's just, you know, it could be vacation properties. There's just not a lot of turnover. So there are exceptions to that. But So there's FISBOs, there's expireds. Then third one I'm going to tell you is houses for rent. I've said this before. Those of you attended the seminar um, about homeowners who are looking to rent their property, you call them up, say, hey, listen, my house buyer is willing to pay you a m number to buy your house, and it made you smile. Would you consider selling? So there's houses for rent. Then there's, uh, and by the way, oh, I'm sorry, somebody just uh, uh, texted me here. Uh, the Red X, to get the free Red X, the 30 days and to get rid of, you go to DarylSpecial.com. That's the website, DarylSpecial.com. You type in the word SMILE, all capital is the coupon code, and then you get uh, the uh, setup fee is waived, though 150, and you get the first 30 days free. Okay. Um, there's also over-the-phone CMA. Now, we're going to post this, uh, a sample of this on the Facebook wall. I'll do that today after the call. And uh, what this is, Mary, is sending out a flyer to people saying, hey, listen, I'll give you a free over-the-phone market analysis. Um, and here's how that works. They call you and say, yes, Mary, I'm interested and let's role play this. Mary, you be a homeowner. You say, there, I, I saw your ad about the over-the-phone market analysis. Go ahead, say that. Okay. Daryl, I saw your ad for the over-the-phone market analysis. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for calling. Um, yes, my name is Daryl. I'm sorry. What's your name? Oh, it's Mary. Mary. Okay, great. Mary what? Mary Margaret Brown. Okay, Mary Margaret Brown. Um, Mary, should I call you Mary or, or Mary Margaret? Just Mary Margaret is great. Thank you. Okay. All right, great. So Mary Margaret, here's how it works. Is I'm going to ask you some questions uh, about your property, uh, bedrooms, baths, stuff like that. So that way I get the information, and then what I'll do is I'll take that information, I go to the computer and um, find similar homes and come up with a market analysis and a full report, and then I'll be able to share that with you. So do you have time for me to ask you some questions now? Sure. Sure. So what, what, do you know what kind of house you have, Mary? Is it a, a one-level ranch, or is it a colonial or a cape? Do you happen to know? Um, it's like a colonial. Okay, okay, good. And do you know how uh, how many bedrooms does it have? Uh, two and a half. Okay, great. So anyway, here's what I'm going to do, Mary, because it's going to take too long to do this. But when you're do what I'm doing is I'm going to start asking questions about the property. And while I'm having this conversation with you, I'm going to say things like, oh, that sounds lovely. And do you have kids? Oh, I have kids. I actually only have one. He's going to college. Anyway, I'm going to build this relationship with you, Mary Margaret, over the phone. And then mm -hmm. at the end of the call, I'll say, all right, Mary Margaret, what I need to do is go to the computer and check some information, and, and I'll call you back tonight to give you a, a, a market analysis. Is that okay? And you'll say yes. And then I call you back. I say, Mary and Margaret, hey, this is Daryl. You say, hey, listen, uh, here's what I came up with. Your house is worth somewhere between 400 and 450. Now, I know that's a big spread, um, but for me to really give you an accurate number, I would need to see the house. Do you have time for me to come by tonight? I can give you a more accurate number while I'm over. I can drop off all the paperwork of all the things that I found. So my point here, Mary and Margaret, this is a way 
to generate calls to you, to build a relationship, start a nice conversation, and uh, then um, get those appointments. Got it? Yeah, that's great. I like that one. Yeah, it's great. Over the phone, CMA, and what I'll do, because some people will actually call because they'll, they'll be interested to do it, you know, over the phone. They don't have to sit through a sales presentation, but it really gets you in the door. Mary Morgan, there's also past FISBOs, past expireds. Those are great, which also you can find in Red X. Um, there's neighborhood open houses. Now, what's really cool about neighborhood open houses, and this is one of my favorite, is what we, whenever we get a listing, of course, we'll do a public open house most of the time. But one of the things I recommend to power agents is to do a neighborhood open house, meaning that you take a new listing, and Mary Margaret, even if it's not your list, you can do this with other agents' listings. You ask them if you can borrow their listing, and you do a promotion and a mailing to the neighborhood. You say, uh, we're doing a neighborhood open house just for the neighbors by invitation only. And um, um, what, you, what I suggest you do is actually create like a wedding invitation postcard looking piece saying you're invited. And in that invitation to the neighbors, you tell the neighbors the homeowner will not be home. I'll be there to meet everybody. And the reason why we're doing this, you may know of somebody who's thinking about buying into this lovely subdivision. So now watch what happens, Mary and Margaret. You do a mailing to all the neighbors, let's say 50. You say, this is by invitation only. It's just for the neighbors. Um, the homeowner will not be home. Uh, and we're doing this so that way if you know friends or family. But what's real important, Mary, is every person that comes into that open house, you know they're not a buyer because they're, they're coming in off your invitation. It's separate from the public open house. So if you have 50 homeowners, you mail out 50 postcards, you're probably going to get like 40 people coming to the house because they're curious. Every neighbor's curious about their neighbor's home. Now, these 40 neighbors, when you're touring the house with them, you're not focused on the house because they're not buyers. You focus on building a relationship and asking things like, so, oh, you live in the neighborhood. How long have you guys lived in the neighborhood? Oh, great. What do you like best about the neighborhood? What style of house do you have? Have you ever thought about moving? If you were going to move to, where would you move? Where would you move to? Have you looked at any houses? Over? Do you know how much your house is worth? I think every homeowner should have an updated market analysis on their property. Why don't I do this? I don't mind. Why don't I find the time? I can come over to your house and take a look at it and give you an updated market analysis just so you have it. It's always good to know what your property is worth. Anyway, you're going to generate, if you have 40 people come over, you should actually be scheduling 40 CMAs in that neighborhood. Does that make sense? Hmm. Wow. Yeah, that makes sense. So there's a bunch that I just gave you, the FISBOs, the expired, the houses for rent, past FISBOs, past expireds, over-the-phone CMA, neighborhood open house, one last one, and then I'm going to open up to another person who has a question, and that is orphans. Uh, what orphans are, Mary Margaret, these are people that bought or sold a house through your office, your company. That agent left the company. They're no longer working there. No one's working them in their past client base. So what you would do is ask your broker for a list of all the closed deals where the agent who was involved in that's not in, working for the company anymore and adopt them into your past client base. And then what you can do is call these people, say, hey, you know, um, hi, my name is Mary Margaret from Power Realty. The reason why I was calling is it seems as though you bought a home from us five years ago. The agent who was involved in that sale is no longer working in our company. Um, I've been designated as your new representative that if you ever need anything real estate related, I'm here for you. And then they'll say, well, it's very kind of you. And they say, by the way, how are you liking the house? Have you made any major changes to it? What feature did you like best about it? You know, it has been a few years. Have you thought about making a move? If you were going to move, where would you move to? Would you go to a bigger? Would you go to a small? Oh, no, you're not going to. You're going to say, okay, great. Well, uh, here's the other thing. Being that it's been five years, I'd be more than happy to give you an updated market analysis. I think it's good that everybody should know what their property is worth. They should do that once a year. You know, would you like me to do that? There's no, I'm just doing that It's because you're a past client. Anyway, so there's another way to generate some, um, you know, CMAs, okay? Okay, sounds good. Did you learn anything here? Yeah, I did. You nailed it real quick in a nutshell. Like a bunch right. of ideas. I was taking notes while I talked. 
Good, Mary Margaret. I'm really glad. Thanks for calling in today, and thanks for your question. Really appreciate it. If you'll hit star six on your keypad, that will put mm-hmm. you back on. That'll put you back on mute. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you, sweetie. All right. Who else has a question? Anybody else? Uh, just hit star six on your keypad one time, and that will put you on mute. So, who has a question? Who has a question? Who has a question? I hear somebody just came off mute. Who is that? Hey, Daryl, it's Cindy Chapel. Hey, Cindy, how are you? Cindy, where are you from and, and, and uh, what company are you with? I am from St. Petersburg, Florida, and I'm with Charles Rittenberg. All right, all right. Yes. St. Petersburg. Uh-huh, lovely Florida, yes. Yeah, that's St. April. Is that where my uncle is? Yeah, St. Pete Beach. My uncle's Oh, in Pete. yeah, if he's thinking about upgrading or downsizing, please let him you know, give my name. <laughs> Oh, I don't think I need to. I don't think I need to help you, Cindy. I think you're, you're you got your game on, baby. All right, what's, the, what's your question? Um, in conjunction with like the um, open house for the neighborhood, sometimes I've noticed like if I do open houses, you might get an influx of people. So, what would be a good flyer to have in hand? You know, if you can't talk to everybody, something that's going to summarize your points or uh, you know what you want to do, so they you know maybe get back to you. All right, so that's really great. Great, great, great question, Cindy. Is it Cindy or Cynthia? It's Cindy, please. Okay, thanks, Cindy. So uh, there's a couple of things. Um, This is such a great question. One of the things that we used to do in my company is that when we had, first of all, we always had almost almost all of our open houses that we did for the public, we'd always get a huge turnout. Yeah, there's a lot of reasons why we we got a huge turnout. We're not going to discuss that right now. That's not the question. But because of that, we would have two people at an open house. So that's the first thing. Um, if you can, whenever possible, have somebody with you at an open house. And what we the reason why we had the two people wasn't so much on dealing with the, 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 the number of people coming through. We did it because if we found a really hot buyer, let's say an A buyer, like they're definitely – looking, they have, uh, they sold the property. Like if we know they're probably going to buy that weekend, mm-hmm. one, one of the two of us would stay at the open house. The other one would actually leave with those buyers and start showing property and write a contract that day. And, um, you know, when people say that public open houses don't sell houses, that wasn't true for us. So that was one of the things that we did. Number two, um, we didn't do this, but here's my advice to your question. And that is actually creating, um, a teaser flyer that you would give to buyers. Mm -hmm. And it could be more than one. So, for example, one of the things that I teach, Cindy, is the six-step buying process. You know, if you've got my CDs, um, there's a CD about uh, how to play with buyers and make more sales. And it explains, you sit down with a buyer and you actually go through, the first thing I want to do is inform you about myself. Then I want to ask you questions. Like there's six steps to help a buyer buy a property, and mm-hmm. you explain that when you first meet them. So it's called the six-step buying process. So what I would do is create a flyer that says, um, looking to buy the right home with the least amount of aggravation in today's market, ask me about my six-step buying process. This is guaranteed to help you find the right house Uh, in today's market, something like that. Okay. So this is a flash. Now watch this. Let's say you give this, and it's so it's just two sentences and has your face on it, and you give this to a buyer when they walk in. And then another another buyer walks in. So now you've got what you just said. You've got like two or three. You've got this onslaught. You can't deal with everybody, right? Right. So when they leave, any of those people that leave you, They've got this flyer, and like, what is this? What is this? She's tell, this thing. What is this six step buying process? So now they're either going to a hang around, want to ask you about it, or b they're going to follow up and do their own call. That's one suggestion. Another one could be, let's say your lender he has a great mortgage program. Um, let's say you know we found a vendor right now, a mortgage company uh, for investment properties that's fifteen percent. Mm-hmm. Every mortgage person I spoke to, they're 20, 25 percent down. Well, we found somebody. No, we can do an investment property for 15 percent. So let's say that your mortgage company had that you work with had some kind of 
exceptional whatever, a uh, quick 24-hour uh, qualification hotline or whatever, uh, create a flyer on that. It's a teaser for people to call you to get more information. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, that, yeah that's a good lead too, yes. So I would, anybody that, that gets greeted, I would give them that information. And uh, last thing is, if you have a raffle, right? If you, okay. have, if you are going to do some kind of raffle, you have a mortgage company be your, your financier on this. Let's say it's for, you know, a dinner certificate, um, one of those, those, those cards to a restaurant that's, you know, worth 50 bucks, something like that to make sure you get the buyers to fill out that sheet with their name mm -hmm. and phone number. Um, and that's really all you need is a name and a phone number so you can do your follow-up calls. Um, now, another way to do it, actually, which is actually better, is you give buyers, instead of a sign-in sheet, you actually give them a card, like a postcard. And that way you can hand out postcards as people. Instead of you having a sign-in sheet where you've got to have buyers Two, two buyers, three buyers standing in line waiting to fill out the sheet, there's a good chance they're not going to wait in line to fill out that sheet. Do you follow me? Right. Okay. But if you give every buyer that walks in a postcard with it's a form to fill out, their name, their phone number, their address, and how long they're, when are they, are they, are they thinking of buying the next 30 days, 60 days, six months, whatever, like a couple of questions, they don't have to wait in line to fill it out. So does that make sense, what I'm saying? Yes, it does. And if, and if you decide to do some kind of raffle or tease or give them something for filling it out, let's say you have a report. It doesn't have to be a raffle. Say, everybody that's, that fills this out for me, uh, I need to let the homeowner know, you know how many people shut up, really appreciate it, fill this out. And when you give this back to me, I have a, uh, uh, um, this checklist on how to buy a house in today's market or a report on what to look for when buying a home, something of value, you're telling the buyer, by you filling this out and giving it back to me, I'm going to give you a gift. So not even a raffle. Um, okay. So there's yeah, a few different, there's, I just gave you several different ideas on how it. to capture the information, how to deal with the onslaught. Did that help you, oh. sweetie? No, oh, it sure does. Yes. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, no, thank you. Great question. Star six, again, we'll put you on mute. Somebody else, uh, you have a question you need some help with, some coaching, some idea? Hit star six to take yourself off mute. Um, let's see, what do I got here? I see, I see, uh, I see some of my, my, my um, other people on here. Okay, I'm just checking. All right. Hi. Somebody else who's got a question, star six. Uh, yeah, this is Charles. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Charles. Okay. Yeah, I was at your uh, show last week in Louisville. Uh, enjoyed it. Um, just, uh, you talked a lot about uh, the uh, listing appointment. Uh, what about getting the listing appointment? Any uh, key things to try to get that appointment in the first place that you could mention? Uh, yeah, Charles. Uh, it it kind of goes back to, um, did you just mute yourself? Is, is, did I do something wrong? Or Okay. Are you still there, Charles? I'm, I'm still here, yeah. Okay, okay, good. Um, yeah, to get the listing appointment, well, I gave leads to Mary, um, uh, Mary, uh, Mary Margaret just a moment ago. Is that what you mean, or you mean something else? Yeah, just, you know, just kind of key things to uh, maybe kind of sum up, you know, the best things when trying to get that listing appointment in the first place. Um, you know, I, I guess, uh, Charles, uh, for me, you know, again, my favorite is the physicals and expireds, and, uh, you know, how I used to do that. Um, let's do it real quick. Uh, do you mind if I role play with you, Charles? You'd be a FISBO? Okay, sure. Would this help you if I role played how to call a FISBO? Yeah. Okay. All right, I want to make sure I, I give you what you need, and I think everybody else will appreciate this. Now, by the way, Charles, I just want to remind you about something. You know, it's now 1150. We've been into the call for 50 minutes. We're recording this call. I'm gonna. Have, my office will post this recording on the on the Power Program website. So if you want to listen to what I'm about to do with you, the role play, you'll know to listen to it. You know, 50 minutes into it, and you can download it onto your computer. Okay. Perfect. All right. So you be a fizzbo. I'm gonna call you. You say hello. Ring, ring. Hello. Yes. Hi. I'm calling about the house for sale. Yes. Yes, is it still Sorry. available, sir? Yes, it is. 
Yes. Well, hi, hi. My, name, my name is Daryl Davis. I'm with Power Realty. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Good. Um, the reason why I was calling is I noticed your ad, and I was wondering, are you working with agents at all in the sale of your property? Uh, I've been thinking about doing a, paying a commission to a buyer agent. You've been thinking about do, paying a commission to the buyer agent? Yes. Okay. Cool. Very cool. Well, yeah, that's that's definitely a, a great option uh, for homeowners such as yourself. I, you know, I looking at the ad, I was really attracted to the, it's Like, this is a good ad. Did you write this yourself? Uh, I did. Yeah, well, you, you, you did a great job. <laughs> you did a great job. Um, I'm sorry. By the way, my name's Daryl uh, Davis. What's your name, sir? Uh, it's Charles Shacklett. Shacklett. Okay, Charles Shacklett. Well, Charles, um, so let me just uh, – let me ask you. So this – it says here you've got uh, th four bedrooms, two baths. Are those bedrooms all upstairs or down? some downstairs? How is it set up? Uh, yeah, we've got the master on the first floor and three bed up. Okay. Okay. All right. Wow. Okay. Great. And how many baths do you have? Uh, two and a half. Two and a half. Okay. Great. And uh, well, it sounds like how old is the house, Charles? Uh, it is forty-seven years old. Forty-seven. Okay. H have you done anything different? Like, are you the original owner, or did you come in second or third, or? Uh, we're we're second. Second. Okay. Did you do any uh, changes to the pr property after you moved in? Uh, kitchen upgrades, yeah, windows, oh. new windows, yep. Okay, awesome. Well, that's really good. That's, I'll tell you, you probably have heard this before. I, you know, the kitchen is one of the best selling things to do to a property. You know, give it that that upgrade. So, uh, I like to cook, so I know <laughs> I wouldn't mind a new kitchen myself. Uh -huh. uh, so, Charles, uh, how long how long have you been living in this house? Uh, seventeen years. Wow. And uh, are, you, are you looking to stay locally, or are you moving out of state? Uh, we're, we're down in sizing. Okay. All right. When you say we, I'm assuming there's uh, your, your the woman. Yeah, my wife. Your wife. Okay, great. All right. Good. Is it just you and your wife? And, and that's yes. Yeah. Okay. Huh? That makes sense. That makes sense. Well, listen, Charles. The house sounds really nice. Would you be offended if I just stopped by to take a look at it? Uh, no. When do you want to come back? Okay, good. So, Charles, let me just stop there. So, because um, I want to, I mean, that's essentially the call. That's the dialogue. And by the way, Charles, the actual dialogue, um, the script is in the, is on the uh, Power Program website under Classroom. Uh, okay. And it's also on the FISBO CD if you got the CDs, the FISBO Mastery. And also it's in the Power Agent book. It actually has the dialogue and it explains some things about the dialogue. So, okay. And here's what I want to point. First of all, how did that feel for you? What did you notice that I did that you think was good? Uh, well, yeah, I, I think you asked me questions about the house, not not about anything else. You, you weren't trying to sell me. You were trying to ask questions. Right. And let me tell you, there's a big there's a big powerful distinction in my dialogue that works really really well, Charles. You know, I I wish, well, I wish I could I could show you guys. Hang on one second. I'm going to tell you all something about. Um, I, I, you can't see. Well, oh no, you can see my screen. Hang on. Uh, there are those of you that are seeing my screen right now. Um, I'm going, but I'm going to, for those who can't see the screen, it's okay. I'm going to read it to you. There is, um, I, I'm, I, I'm doing a seminar Thursday in New York and Brooklyn, so I uh, created this slide. This is one of my classes. What we did is we tracked their calls, and this is just from some of the students in the class. that We broke people into teams, and there's uh, what's on my screen right now, Charles, is there's like 10 or something on the screen. One agent, he, she called, her name's Colleen, she called four FISBOs. She had four conversations, and she actually got 155 listing appointments. Now, the reason why she got so many is because in the class, we count every potential listing as appointment. She got a hold of a builder who is building a, a subdivision of like 155 pieces, and she got that. So that would be like 155 listings. Um, but here's, yeah, here's what I want to tell you. This group, these group, 
we had this one group of like 10 people, they only had 27 FISBO conversations. So they talked to 27 FISBOs. They actually got nine listing appointments out of 27. So if you do the math, that means for every three uh, uh, conversations, they got one appointment. So Charles, you should be able, doing what I just taught you, you should be able to talk to three FISBOs and get one listing appointment. Wouldn't that be good? That'd be great, yep. All right. So, so use my dialogue, that's the first thing, but I'm just going to point out something about the dialogue. And that is, what you said was the questions worked really well because I was focusing on the house. There's two types of questions, and then, gang, we're going to wrap up the call. The first set of questions when you're calling the FISBO is about the house. And the reason why those, those are the first set of questions is because homeowners are used to answering these types of questions. They're almost programmed because they've had other buyers calling them about, can you tell me more about the house, what's the square footage, the lot size, blah, blah, blah. And so you're going to get less resistance because they're used to that. Now, what I didn't do on our call, I started to, but I, I rushed our call, Charles. Like, I would have actually taken more time with you. I started to ask questions about where you're moving to, why there, when do you need to get there, by? Because I want to know what you're committed to accomplishing. So the first set of questions are about the house, and when you feel like you've broken down some of the barrier, you start asking a little bit more personal, but you want to make sure they're ready for those personal questions. And the more of those that you can ask, the closer relationship you're creating and the better chance you have in getting the appointment. So that's, uh, that's it on that. Did that help you, Charles? That helped a lot. Thank you very much. You're so welcome. All right, gang. So listen, we are, we are end, uh, we've come to the end of our call and we've got two minutes left. So in the two minutes, I just want to say a couple of things and I'm going to take everybody off mute in just a minute to say goodbye. But, uh, this is the time of year. We're now in August and, uh, going into September. Now, some of you, in your markets, you have school that's starting in the next few weeks. Um, in New York, we uh, in some other parts of the country, it's in September. So you're going to get this little last push, perhaps, of buyers, but then you're going to start to see it s slow down. So what one of the best things you can do right now is gear up and get more listing inventory because as we move from the summer into the school season and then into the holidays, any buyer that's going to come out after school has started, after the holidays start, then the cold weather, like any buyers coming into this last quarter is going to be really serious buyers. And so one of the best things a homeowner can do is put their house up on the market going into this last quarter of this year. So think about what you need to do to, to get ready or to, uh, to build your inventory. Some of you, your listing conversation book needs to be improved upon. For some of you, you need to sign up for Red X and, and start doing that 30 days for free with them. Um, some of you need to, uh, I don't know, but basically get your act together when it comes to building your inventory. So whatever you need to do, do it over this next week or two, and then start prospecting. Um, and um, that's all that I have for you. Oh, boy, one other thing, somebody sent me a text, I forgot to go. They said, do I do one-on-one -on -one coaching? I, me personally, yes, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, but I only take a few people at a time. And um, if you're interested in that, I, th we, I think we have one or two spots open right now. You can e email me or email my office, and uh, we'll contact you and tell you how that works. All right, gang, so that's it. Last thing I'm going to say, don't forget, we don't just help people buy and sell real estate. We actually help them get to their next level. So the more people you help get to the next level, the more deals you're going to make, the more money you make. So go out there and help a lot of people. Let me say, uh, take everybody off mute. And so, hey, gang, was this a good call for you? Yes? Great call. Yes. 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 Always good. Oh, All right. Great. Thank you. Yes. Very good. Wonderful. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate that. And the last thing I will say is the magazine do not get overwhelmed. There is way too much that I gave you this month. Just pick one or two things, implement them into your business. All right, gang, go out there. Have a great month. I look forward to talking in the next Power Call. Thank you. Bye-bye.